WJ is Handy Dad here today. We're talking about things to look for if you're gonna buy a golf cart. This was my one and only golf cart purchase, and I've learned quite a bit since I bought it. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and not make the same mistakes that I did or at least go into your purchase knowing things that you may or may not have to fix or replace. So one of the obvious things you can check is the tire tread. Look at all four tires very carefully. Look for things like separation. Look for nails or patches, different things like that. If you're planning on buying one to uh, jack up and put new tires on then obviously that won't be as important to you but if you're needing it to be ready to go when you buy it obviously you want to look at the tires and see how long they're going to last tires can be one of those things that can be expensive to replace particularly if you are just doing it on a temporary basis until you get the jacked up tires Obviously, if you can, you want to drive it, make sure that it accelerates, goes in reverse, and stops when you hit the brakes. You also want to make sure that the parking brake actually activates the brakes enough to stop the vehicle. Now, the nice thing is, if you've seen my video on adjusting brakes, it could be as simple as just the brakes being out of adjustment. If you can get under the vehicle and see where the brakes are, and if they just need to be adjusted, that'll tell you a lot. When you're buying an electric golf cart, one thing to keep in mind, the batteries are very expensive. You can plan on spending at least $600 upwards of a little over a thousand dollars to replace all the batteries so a couple things you want to keep in mind one a lot of the batteries will have a date stamp on them you want to see if they're all pretty close like all these six batteries I bought at the same time but you notice some of them are dated 815 some are dated 715 that was just because that's what the store had so I had to take what I could get but if you got a lot of different years particularly that may be a sign that they've been replacing one battery at a time that's not necessarily a bad thing but you just need to keep that in mind that if they've been doing that you're gonna probably be replacing one battery here and there you want to check the water level in the battery I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but the water should be above the fins. If the water levels are low, it doesn't necessarily mean that the battery is bad, but it's certainly something questionable. Uh, they need to be topped off with distilled water. Do not put tap water in here. You want to plug in the charger and make sure that it clicks on and is charging. When it's charging, you might also open up those water caps and look for bubbles in the individual cells. That's a good indication that the cell is working and is charging. If you have a voltmeter, obviously you can check the batteries. In this case, these are eight volt batteries and there's six of them to make the 48 volt golf cart. Some of them are 36 volts. <clears throat> you may have six six volt batteries, different combinations. Uh, but you want to check and make sure that they are putting out the correct voltage. I'm going to say a good rule of thumb on the batteries from what I've experienced is they last about five years. Obviously you may get less, you may get more. The ones that I had in here when I bought this all had 2010 dates and you see in 2015 I had to buy batteries. One thing I would have never had a clue to check and so this is where you know the learning experience comes into play this golf cart came with headlights installed as most of you know if you've seen my other videos car stuff is usually 12 volt negative ground and so 
because of that, when you add accessories like headlights and so forth, there usually has to be a conversion from the golf cart voltage to the voltage that's using the accessory, so 12 volts. Well, if you have 8 volt batteries, there's no way to make a 12 volt out of a combination of 8 volt. You could take 3 8 volt batteries, make 24 volts, and then split the voltage so that the hot goes to the hot on one side and then the negative connects to the other hot on the like in your lights. You have the hot from the battery go to the hot on the one light, the negative on the one light go to the hot on the other light, and then the negative from that light go to the negative on the battery. That in essence turns your lights into a 24 volt light. You could do that. The problem with that is you're going to be pulling power from half of your batteries and I don't know how well these chargers can accommodate for that sort of thing. And so that's what I'm getting at here. I don't know if they just didn't know what they were doing when they did this or if they bought the wrong kit or what. But it appears to me that they put a 36 to 12 volt converter on here. And the reason I say that is I tested it by hooking it up to 48 and guess what it was no longer converting to 12 it was converting to 20 something so I had to put it back but if you'll notice there's a red wire here connected to the negative on there and then across the golf cart there is a similar red wire connected to the hot on that side so basically, you've got 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 8 is 24, plus 8 is 32. They've got it going 32 volts into that converter, putting out 12. Now, the golf cart works fine. The headlights work on it. The brake lights work on it. And so far, I haven't noticed any real problems with it. But you're only pulling from those four batteries when you're running the headlights. So those four are going to discharge before the other two do. And like I said, I don't know what sort of long-term problem that creates for the charger. I don't know if the charger is able to accommodate and just charge those other four batteries more so than the two that don't need it, or if it shuts down once the two are charged and therefore those four will never get fully charged. So that's an issue, and in another video you're going to see me, I'm going to take this charger out and put in a 48 to 12 converter and uh, wire this up correctly. But that's something I would have never thought to even look for buying a golf cart. And that was, like I said, this has a 36 to 12 converter on it, not a 48 to 12. And that wire right there would be over here if it was a 48 volt conversion. So that's probably one of the things, like I said, you would never expect. You turn on the headlights and they work, the brake lights work, all that. Would have never thought to check for that, but as I started digging into this, I noticed that and went, whoa. And then, like I said, I tried connecting it to the full 48 and then the headlight stopped working so that tells me the converter on here is is only a 36 to 12 it doesn't offer a 48 to 12 there are a couple ways to check the batteries the, the cells themselves uh, I made a handy dad blunder I actually own one of the battery checkers and I can't find it and I've been looking and looking and looking I've probably spent the last 30 minutes looking for it it's not where it's supposed to be so <laughs> lesson there keep your tools better organized mine are pretty well organized but every once in a while I get a stray tool like that that I can't find when I need it but basically it looks like a turkey baster and you open up the water suck up some of the water and it'll tell you the status of the cell that's there I'll be honest I don't know how well that thing really works but supposedly it tells you the other thing is if you have a multimeter you can check the individual cells and see what they're reading 
I'm sorry, you can check the batteries and see the volts that they're reading. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to disconnect them all. You just touch the terminals. So 8.43 there. 8.42. Point four five, so you get an idea. These are all batteries that are in really good condition. You see what they're reading. Eight point four one over here. Point four four. And eight point three on that one. So. Got one battery that's a little weaker than the others. The other thing you can do is check the amperage on them. This particular golf cart having a street legal package on it, you want to test the brake lights, make sure they come on when you hit the brakes. Uh, the nice thing is, it's just kind of a uh, sensor adjustment. If if it's the brake pedal, I mean, obviously it could be the bulbs if it's not coming on too. But if it's working, that's great. In my case, it was working, but only if you really just about slam the brakes down to the floor. And so uh, I was able to adjust the sensitivity on the pedal to where it would, the brake lights would come on with just a bare tap of the brakes, which is what it should do.